Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today, I wanna catch you up on a few things I have been working on and a few things I'm excited to get started on. Welcome to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey, and on this channel, I mainly like to chat all about my love for fiber arts. So mainly knitting, but I do also share some of my sewing, some spinning, sometimes some crochet. Sometimes. <laughs> it hasn't gone very well this year. I really need to finish my crochet project. And occasionally I also share about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. And we love gardens and chickens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today, I have a finished object and I also have a few different works in progress that I want to update y'all on, as well as some plans that I have really been ruminating over. It is a snow day here in Arkansas. We don't get very many snow days in Arkansas. And I'd say, you know, probably it snows too maybe three times a year and we got about three inches but my parents who live about 30 minutes north of us they actually got seven inches or more maybe they got up to nine i'm trying to remember they got a lot more than we did just 30 miles north of us but it was enough snow for sledding <laughs> and you know lots of wet dirty clothes and wet dirty dogs so that's always fun. It is absolutely beautiful outside though. And our temperatures are freezing. It has been lows like one degree, three degree Fahrenheit. So I think one degree Fahrenheit is around negative 17 point something degrees Celsius. No matter how you measure it, it's pretty cold. And then we've only had highs in the teens definitely been wool weather all my knits are like this is my time to shine no i do love it this time of year because i feel like it's the few weeks out of the year that i can really pile on my knits and they feel amazing so there's like wool sweaters wool shawls and scarves and hats and gloves and mittens and it's just it's amazing wool socks some of my favorite socks for whenever I'm outside are actually my smart wool socks. Is that a sin for a knitter to say? I do love my hand knit socks, but I tend to knit a lot of those with nylon in it. And I don't know, there's just something about it. The wool is usually super wash as well, and they are amazing. But when I'm wearing boots and I'm trekking around outside, I really like my smart wool socks. <laughs> So I've been wearing smart wool socks and my glare ups, if that's how you say it, which I got at LL Bean a few years ago. And all of that wool is just wool on wool. And that's what I've been living in in the house this week because I can't feel my toes at all. <laughs> they have just been absolutely freezing, which is very unlike me because I mentioned it before, but I used to just be so hot all the time. I literally never wore socks. Even in the fall, I would just rather wear mules and no socks. But I guess my circulation must be getting bad because I'm freezing. So 
so it's been all the cozy knitwear it's just been like a knitwear parade the last week which has been so fun <laughs> Enough about that though, you all get it. I've been getting to wear my knits, I'm excited. So I do have a finished object, which I'm gonna share a little bit about. I will share more about this whenever it is released. I'm still not sure what the release day is. And I'm also thinking about what I wanna do with it. So without further ado, let's talk about my finished object. All right, y'all, I have been testing a raglan sweater for Alicia Plummer, and it doesn't really have a name yet. We've been calling it the Noro sweater because she knit hers out of Noro Silk Garden worsted, and I knit mine out of Noro Madara. So this is actually my first time knitting with this yarn base, uh, this yarn brand as well. I've never knit with Noro. And one of the main reasons that I had never tried it before was because most of their yarn seems to have mohair in it. And I think you mostly see the Silk Garden for sale at yarn shops that I have been to in person that carry Noro. So I wasn't really even aware of Madara until maybe last year because I saw quite a few different knitters making things with it. And when I looked at the yarn base information, it did not have mohair in it. So Nora Madara is a singles yarn. It is a worsted weight, but I would say more definitely Aran, and it could even jump up to a very light chunky yarn. <laughs> I can definitely get a chunky weight gauge with this yarn. <sighs> So it is made up of wool, alpaca, and silk, and it's absolutely stunning. So one of the most popular colorways of this yarn is the sake color, and I do have a sweater quantity of that, which I'm hoping to knit a cardigan out of at some point this year. But for this test knit, I decided I wanted to try out the Madara and I wanted to knit it in a brown color. So I chose the colorway number 22, and the sweater pattern is a really lovely, cozy, chunky-ish knit. It's a worsted weight gauge, so it's not overly bulky or chunky at all, but it has a nice two by two rib double fold collar, some um, shaping to raise the back a little bit. 
and then a nice lovely deep raglan and an oversized fit so i got to thinking you know this is oversized how do i want to style this and at first i was kind of thinking cropped oversized french tuck it but then i started thinking about a big oversized sweater that i could wear outside with leggings or straight jeans and boots and socks and one of my favorite fashion genres is the granola girl style i really love that i love the hiking aesthetic um especially in the fall and winter time and i am outside a lot just you know here at home and i like it it's very it's cute but it's also a very practical style so i had saved all these pictures of what i was sort of going for for inspiration and i knit the sweater i knit the size five and everything went really well but then whenever i blocked it this baby grew a lot <laughs> So my swatch did not grow this much. And just a little swatch of this, it's actually very, very light material. The fabric is very light. But this sweater in its entirety is very heavy. <laughs> so whenever I blocked it, it grew a lot. And I definitely got the oversized vibes. So now I'm at the point of trying to decide, should I keep it at this length? I'll pop a picture up of me wearing it. And as you can see, it comes like it basically covers my butt. <laughs> so great for leggings, but pretty much the only way I can wear it is just in this one way. So should I keep it this length or should I rip back to a short shorter version that I can sort of tuck into the waistbands of my pants. I'm not sure. What I might do is leave it the length that it is and wear it this way for a while. And then if I get tired of it, rip it back to a shorter length and re-knit the ribbing so that it's more of a cropped style. I don't know. I'm, I think I may leave it this way for, for a while and see what I think about it. <sighs> I don't know though. <laughs> it is very long. I showed a picture of it to a few of my knitting friends and they said it passed the vibe check. So I don't know. I'm still, I don't know. I'm still trying to decide what I'm doing here. But let me go ahead and chat a little bit about the yarn and my knitting experience with it. And then I will talk more about the sweater whenever it is time for it to be released. So the Madara yarn was really nice to knit with, but I do want to say that I am a very loose knitter. The way I tension my yarn tends to push me into the very loose <laughs> knitter category. So because of that, I did not have any trouble with this yarn breaking on me. I did hear from multiple people that it tended to break apart while they were knitting with it or while they were doing a sewn bind off. And so I went into it wondering if that was going to happen to me and it did not. And I think that is mainly because of how loose a hand I have with my yarn. I'm not ever tugging on it really at all. The one time it did break on me was whenever I had taken it outside and as I was bringing it back in, the yarn that was sort of my yarn tail that was hanging between my sweater and my ball of yarn <laughs> got pulled down a little bit and it wrapped around the handle of the door. And as I walked in, it just pulled it apart. So I can definitely see from how easily that happened that it could be an issue especially if you're a tighter knitter that pulls on your yarn a little bit more it could be an issue with your yarn sort of splitting apart it is very easy to spit splice back together though so 
I think that makes it similar to unspun yarn. Now this is a spun single, but that characteristic reminds me a little bit of unspun yarn. One thing that might help is if you have wound it into a ball or a yarn cake, to pull up quite a bit as you're going to need it so that you're not jerking it off of the, the ball or cake. Instead, it's ready and you can just sort of gently pull it into your knitting. And I tend to do that anyway um, with, without thinking. It's just sort of part of my hand movements when I'm knitting. I'll pull up a lot of yarn and then let it rest and I'll knit with it and I'll pull up quite a bit because I don't like it to feel tight. I like it's pulling my working yarn at all while I'm knitting. I did do a tubular bind off on my sleeves and on the hem. So I worked a lot of tubular or I should say sewn. I did a sewn bind off. Because this is two by two ribbing, I used a special bind off technique, which I have been using for a few years now. I absolutely love it. You do not need to do two rows of double knitting, which I'm not sure how that would work out with two by two rib anyway. I don't know if that would work at all, but you don't need to do it for this technique. And it gives it a nice tubular bind off finish very neat and very clean and I'm gonna link that in the description below because it's just one of my favorite video tutorials that um, I think a lot of people feel like the only option for that kind of tubular bind off is to do um, a cable to actually switch places for a knit and purl stitch that on that last row it turns it into a one by one rib and then you do the sewn bind off but you don't have to do that with this method and I think it looks great. So I worked my way through two cuffs and a hem and I had no problems but there were some thick places that I had a little bit of trouble pulling the yarn through a stitch and I would just hold the yarn and pull that bit of fluff off. It's got a very tweedy look to it. So there's these nips of color and fiber and I did pull some of those off so that it was easier to get the yarn thread through those loops. But I really like the bind off, which is not gonna be fun to unpick. <laughs> if I do shorten this and man I just it's so soft next to skin I was wearing it earlier today with nothing underneath it and it was really comfortable and I really like this yarn I have to say this is a special yarn it's not one that I could knit you know every project in it is pricey but for one hank of worsted weight yarn, you actually get over 200 yards, which is a lot for a worsted weight. Um, normally a DK weight yarn, you would get around that much. So because of how lofty it is, I guess, and how much air is in it, the way it's spun up, you get a lot more yardage for the weight. So let me know your thoughts on this length of sweater and if you think it looks okay the length it is Alicia had mentioned too that I could wetten it and very very cautiously throw it in the dryer for like one minute at a time to try to shrink it which it actually is felting it a little bit and I am so scared to do that this is just such a special yarn I'm not really a huge dryer person with my yarn i don't know i've never really i don't know i'm scared i'm a scaredy cat tell me your thoughts on the length of this sweater okay next up let me show you a few of my works in progress so i'm now focusing 100 percent of my time and energy on a test knit that i am doing for andrea mowry that is going to be well it's due the first week in february and i have not made just a wild amount of progress on it i've had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and i really need to refocus 
on that test. So I've put everything else down. I've finished the, my Noro sweater test, possibly. And now I'm going full steam ahead on that. Unfortunately, it is a secret test, so I can't really share it with you at the moment. But good thing is it is going to be released very, very soon, just in like a couple of weeks. Well, it's going to be released in February, so it won't be long at all. The other thing that I've worked on since we last chatted, and I only worked on it briefly, and I've had to put it down to focus on my test knits, but that is my snowy forest sweater. So this is the sweater I'm knitting out of the Wondering Flock. They're a worsted base. It's a superwash yarn, merino, it's super soft. And this is the color Driftwood. Now, if you saw my previous episode, so the one before my last actual podcast style video, I chatted about how I had messed up on the cables. And so I ended up adding another cable to make it the correct length. And since then, I did split for sleeves, and I'm now in the body. So I've got an extra cable. It's only supposed to have four, and they're supposed to be in increasing lengths. Each cable is supposed to be bigger than the one before, and mine is not. I didn't read the instructions, and instead I just started knitting and thought I knew what I was supposed to be doing. And that is why you should read your pattern and not just try to make up your own pattern. I did split for sleeves and I think it's pretty cute. It's just literally nothing but stocking it now. My collar was worked first and I'm not going to be folding my collar down and sewing it down like is in the pattern instructions. Instead, I'm going to be leaving it like this. And I also talked about in that video how I added short rows to the ribbing of my sweater because this pattern does not include short rows. So I'm really happy with how it's turning out. I just haven't had time to work on it at all since I split for sleeves. But I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be extremely soft and it does have a deep yoke length, but I think that's a style choice and I like it. So I know a lot of people don't like that deep yoke length, but it is okay with me. So I'm excited to get that finished up. Really nothing new to share, except I did finish that last cable and I've split for sleeves and that's pretty much where I'm at. The other project that I have been working on, I have to tell y'all, I actually lied to you about. I thought that I only had one repeat of this left before I started the border. And this is my pressed flowers shawl, which is a pattern by Amy Christoffers. Well, that was not true. It said for more repeats, not for total. So I've still got to do, you know, I did the initial chart and then you have to work, work the chart four more times and I've only done it four times total. So I got to do one more chart before I start the border. I absolutely love it. It's so much fun to work on and I wish that I've had more time that I could devote to this because this is part of the I Can Buy Myself Flowers Knit Along that I am co-hosting with Ashley from Design by So-and-So. And for this knit along, which runs through the last day of January, you can knit any of Amy Christopher's pressed flowers patterns. There's a cardigan, there's a pullover, a shawl, a cowl, a hat, and some socks. So lots of super cool projects. I have been obsessed with everything that y'all are making as part of the cow and I'm actually extremely jealous <laughs> of everything. I had some test knits that have been had to take priority because I did make a commitment and so I am a little disappointed that I have not finished this yet but there's still time. It's so much fun to work on and I love it and 
I just desperately want to get this finished up because I will wear this a lot. This is a DK weight superwash yarn from Birch Fiber Company, I think. I'll put the I'll put the link in the description below. I did get this off of Etsy. It was a kit. And I think I recently saw that she had some more of these available. There's such a beautiful color. And I love that the green and the flowers, like there's definitely contrast. It's not that there's no contrast, but there's bits of green in the contrast color that make it blend really well. And it's not a crazy high contrast. So it just seems to meld together really well. And I like that a lot. So the other pattern that I wanted to make for the knit along was the pressed flowers cardigan. That was actually the main reason I wanted to do the knit along is because I wanted to make the cardigan, but I knew I needed to get my yarn spun up because I wanted to spin my contrast color. So I did get a skein of that done and I even got it all balled up and ready to go. So this is the Cinder and Smoke color from 316 Dye Studio. And it is a fiber base of merino, alpaca, camel, and silk. So it can be a little tricky on the hands <laughs> to spin this up, but it is an absolutely stunning, drapey, shiny, gorgeous yarn. I originally got this rusty color yarn to go with it when I was at Rhinebeck and this is from Primrose Yarn Co. And it is their sport weight, what's it called? Roan Sport. And it is a 50% superwash, 50% non-superwash merino. So I had got this colorway but I also got it in this color, which is on the same base. And I've just kind of been stuck because I can't decide which to be my main color. Most of you said to go with the red, but some of you did say to go with the brown <laughs> because my first inclination is that I think I would like this the best. It's very low contrast, but there is still a contrast there for sure. This would be really special too. And I completely agree with you all. My only question is, which would I wear the most? I'm not sure. So I've just sort of been paralyzed and afraid to cast on. So now I do want to share a little bit of some future things that are coming. So I did mention on my knitting plans for 2024, something I really wanted to do was knit Mr. Young Folk Knits a sweater. So I have knit him multiple things like hats and socks when you're knitting him, some awesome socks for his <laughs> anniversary, which he never but I think he really likes sweaters. So that's something I wanted to do for him this year because he is knit worthy, even though he doesn't wear the socks very often. He does wear sweaters a lot. So I had a few different options that I was trying to pick between. And in the end, he looked at a lot of them and decided on the Porter sweater, which is a design by Megan, who is one of the co-founders of Hudson and West. So it is a pattern available from Hudson and West Co. And it is knit using their forge base in the sample, which is a 70% Merino and 30% Corydale, US Merino and US Corydale. So you get 235 yards of this worsted weight in a 100 gram skein. So that's actually pretty good. And let me just tell y'all, oh my gosh, it is so soft, so bouncy, so squishy. So this yarn was kindly gifted to me by Hudson West Co. 
so that I could make the porter sweater for my husband. And I am so excited. He absolutely loved the pattern and he liked the midnight color. Is that what it's called? Yes, midnight. So it's this really lovely deep navy peacoat blue. And I think that this, the cables are just gonna look absolutely gorgeous in it. So it is an all over cabled sweater <laughs> everywhere, but he is worth it. And I do love knitting cables. The key for me to love knitting cables is to knit them with a springy, bouncy wool yarn. I hate knitting cables a lot of times in socks if it's big cables because I prefer to knit without a cable needle and that requires some give to your yarn. So in a really strong nylon superwash yarn that I use in socks, um, it's hard to cable without a cable needle whenever you have, for instance, a three by three cable or a four by four cable. That pretty much has to be done on a cable needle for me. I mean, I, you can do it, but it really hurts my hands. They slip and the stitches start falling out because the yarn isn't grippy enough. And so for a really pleasant cable knitting experience, I love a woolly wool with some spring and some bounce in it. And this is everything. However, it is not in the least bit scratchy or itchy. It is next to skin delicious. I told him I'm going to steal this from him. <laughs> so I'm going to cast this on hopefully before the next time I chat with y'all. And I can't, I need to finish my test knit first, but I should be able to finish that in the next couple weeks. And then I can really get to knitting on this a lot more, but he is so excited and I think this yarn is going to be such a pleasure to knit with and to wear. So it's like a win-win on both of those fronts. Now, I wanted to share one more thing in acquisitions, which I am very excited about. Some of you may remember Ellie from Little Fern Fibers. I absolutely used to love watching her podcast. She has some adorable little girls, and so she's been really busy lately and hasn't been able to put out any videos but she is a really great spinner and she just opened up her Etsy shop again to have some of her fiber braids that she hand dyes available again. And I am so excited. So she did very kindly send one to me as a gift and I am in love. This is the Merino base and it's a roving 25 micron. It's so soft and it's the color Moon Shadows. So look at the purples and the, the beautiful red and corals and pinks and oranges. It's just absolutely lovely. I cannot wait to start spinning this up. So I think that this will be one of the skeins that I will probably use in my traveler shawl. Um, I'm going to spin this up and then I've got a couple other braids that I think will just look so nice in the same project with this. So I will show you all this as soon as I get it spun up and plied, but I think it's going to be absolutely lovely. Thank you so much, Ellie. And I'm going to put her Etsy shop down in the description so y'all can all check that out. Okay, I am so excited because there are two knit alongs coming up in the next few months that I am going to be a part of that I cannot wait to tell you about. So the first one I've been hinting about, but now I'm going to get to give you all the details. If y'all have been here for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of Wooly Wool, but I still like it to be on the soft side too. So Wooly Knit recently reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be part of a special knit along and I was so excited. A Wooly Knit, which is known for their British wool and merino wool 
cones where you can get this awesome amount of yarn for a great price. They are coming out now with DK weight cones, which is amazing. And they are merino, so they are so soft. This is the color Cosecha Gold and they are 300 gram cones. So the really exciting part is that they are offering it exclusively to all of you lovely subscribers here at Young Folk Knits. And when we were chatting about the knit along, we really wanted to do one that was focused on knitting with natural fibers, woolly wool. So this is gonna be our super fun wool along. <laughs> That means you can knit, you can crochet, whatever kind of craft that you like to use with wool yarn, you are eligible to join along with us. It's going to begin February 5th and it's going to run for a month into March the 4th. And during that time period, I'm going to provide a code that y'all can all get some of this lovely yarn or any of the woolly knit yarn for a discount and then you can join along with us by posting a picture of your whip and using the hashtag ykxyfk which is wooling it and yfk and i think this is just going to be so much fun during that month i am going to be really focusing on my heirloom quilt cardigan which is a pattern by katrin seaberger and I have just been desperate to knit this, but it's sort of been one thing after another that's kind of gotten away. And now is the time. <laughs> Wooling it very generously shared a few different colors with me. So these are the British wool cones. And what I'm gonna be doing with these is holding them double. And that should give me the same thickness to work along with the DK weight yarn that I have as well. I'm gonna make a square up and see what my gauge is and pick my size. <laughs> and I'm just super excited for this. So I really think that y'all are gonna love this amazing new base. And I can't wait to share the code with you so that y'all can try out this super lovely Merino. So that is gonna be super fun and that's going to be running in February, for the month of February into March 4th. And then in March, there's going to be another knit along that I am co-hosting with Sari Nordland for her Pojola sweater. I have to listen to her say it again. I'm going to get her to send it to me in <laughs> a voice note because I always mispronounce everything. But I am absolutely obsessed with this sweater. I love it. It has not been available in English. And she just recently, like a month or so ago, released it in the English translation as well. So I'm so excited. And she knows how much I love the sweater. And so she asked if I wanted to co-host a knit along with her for it. And I was like, um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so Melissa from Sonder Yarn Co. is very kindly sending me some yarn to knit one with, which I cannot wait to show you. And she's also been putting together some kits for the sweater. And the the colors are amazing i had such a hard time choosing what colors to go with because they're all so good so i can't wait to show y'all some different options and sorry is actually in the united states right now she is in seattle and she's going to new york and then she's going out of the country and then headed home but she while she's in the u.s she said she's going to be shopping around for some yarn to knit her second one in so she's super excited and i just cannot wait to knit this sweater it has this beautiful color work yoke and some really interesting details to it. It does have three stranded color work for a few rows. So, um, you know, I just like to warn people of that because I'm not a lover of three stranded color work, but it's definitely not all over the sweater. In fact, the body of the sweater is just lovely stocking it for days. <laughs> so that's going to be really nice and enjoyable to knit. And it just, I don't, there's just something about this pattern that I find absolutely stunning and I'm very 
I wanted to knit it as soon as I saw it. So I'm very excited for this. I know it's going to start in March, but I will give you more details on that as we come near to it and more things are sort of nailed down. <laughs> Don't forget that the I Can Buy Myself Flowers knit along is still going on and keep tagging me in those pictures use that hashtag i can buy myself flowers cal and you will be eligible to win some stitch markers from sable and stone a bag from beautiful sisters and i'm not sure if it's going to be yarn or a gift card but from lovely curio fiber so it's some going to be some great prizes there. All right, that's all I have to share for today. And I hope you're all enjoying some lovely making time this week. Until next time, happy knitting y'all.